So my game was all about, I suppose, fitness and getting to people. And I played in a very important part of the pitch. I played in the middle of the park where I was, part of my job was hitting people. And people were hitting, people were hitting me. So that was the game I was in. So when I played on the edge, which I had to play on the edge, because if I didn't play on the edge, I would have never made it to England. And with that, there's going to be a cost. There's going to be red cards. There's going to be injuries. A lot of my injuries happened in training, just by, I mean, obviously, you train how you play. Would you? I, like, I finished at 34 with injuries. But that was the deal I had with myself. You know, I was going to have to go and compete. I was, I was competing every week. Did you ever, looking back, did you ever, like, how much did you cry? Because it sounds like you had to, you're, you had to turn yourself into something that you were able to turn yourself into, but it mightn't have been your natural state. I'm just wondering, like, did you ever? How did that affect you emotionally? Did you cry the, when I was playing? Yeah. No, no. I think the only time I cried was when I, I left United. So I had a, a bit of a, a disagreement with a few people. But yeah. But other than that, no, you're very much. T- yeah, you've heard loads of sports people say you're in that bubble, you're in the zone. I always say I was in the zone. I would, I used to always say to people, and they didn't quite understand it. I was, I was going to war every week. Was it, was it anger? What when I was playing, you mean? Or just the ability to? There was lots of emotions: fear, fear of losing, fear of letting your teammates down, fear of coming back to Ireland at a young age. You know, when I went to Forest, there was, there was no good me going to Nottingham Forest and being back after a year. Loads of kids go to England from Ireland. I'd seen them, lads I played with, and they come back after a year or two, and it just didn't quite work out. Uh, uh, that, that's no good. I, I wanted to get over there and, and have a, a good career. From a young kid watching, you know, there's, uh, for example, when I, again, when I was nine, ten years of age, I wanted to play football, watch the 1982 World Cup, and I thought, I, I need to play come professional football. I want to play in the World Cups. I want to play football for a living, watching football every weekend, match of the day watching all the top teams, watching brilliant Irish players. So yeah, that was my dream, can I get to England? But the key for me obviously was getting a, first and foremost I had to get a trial. <laughs> I got a trial at Forest and, and Brian Clough is obviously very good at giving young players an opportunity. He threw me in very, very quickly. And every time he spoke to me, I understood what he was talking about. He never complicated the game, ever. He never said anything to me that I was like, I don't get that. Mm. He kept it very, very simple. And to be fair to when I went to United, the messages from all the great managers is very simple. Which I embrace because I'm not a great one for listening too much, you know. I get straight to the point and, I, and, and, and the good players pick it up pretty quickly. Anyway, I've, I've worked with good players even when I was a manager. You might do something in training, the good players pick it up straight away. If you're explaining to a player four, five, six times, you might have to forget about them. Are you good um, with, like, are you, say with your missus, are you, are you good? At, would, would she say, and, and I'm asking you to kind of half speak, half speak for her, but would she say that you're uh, an easy man to be married to? <laughs> or do you, I, I would feel that I'm a hard person to be married to. Yeah, I wouldn't say she'd use that. No, I wouldn't say she'd say it was easy. <laughs> that's just a guess you know no, I wouldn't say she said it was easy what do you find difficult about being married I, I, I don't mean like so what I, what I let me just what I would find difficult about being married would be that sometimes I feel as if w- women thrive on relationship and that's what they want they want details and involvement and talk <laughs> Because I don't think that's, I'm not comfortable with that. So I would have difficulty in sharing stuff with my missus. My wife would want to be, and I just, you know. You know, I'm not too bad with that. No, I'm okay. I, I am. No, I don't mind that. I don't mind that chat. And how about your, do you, is it five kids you have? Five, yeah. Five, okay. And many of them are girls? Four. Four. And how's that? Brilliant. Well, that's brilliant. Really good kids, and uh, and uh, they're good. Really good kids. What's the hardest thing you found about being a dad? Um, I 
no, I'm, are you fucking kidding me, are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm okay. Really? Well, listen, obviously, when you get a bit older and... Uh, yeah. I suppose boyfriends and that type of carry on, yeah. That can be... I said it'd be fairly intimidating meeting you now, not fair enough. Very surprised. Clint Eastwood in the kitchen. No. Oh, that's, that's, that's surely that's the same for everybody. And I, I, you're, it, it's, you're, it's like you're guarded. Now maybe you're just so calm and settled and strong that yeah. you've... Quite relaxed, yeah. I'm yeah. trying to do a somersault or something like that. <laughs> yeah, relaxed. Nice drive up. Yeah. Okay. How, how do you get your clarity then? Clarity for what? For life in general. How do you? How do you? Is I'm it natural? Cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite relaxed. I'm pretty content with my life. I've had, I was lucky with the career I had. Um, biggest challenge, I suppose, for a lot of sports people is when your career is over. As I said, I was 34, and then really there, my challenges started then. What do I do with myself? How do I keep busy? How do I look after the family? How do I look after my few bob? And they're, they're the challenges I, I had over the last, you know, 16, 17 years. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I've obviously made huge mistakes along the way, but generally speaking, I'm pretty, pretty contented with the deal I've got. I do, I've got great freedom. I, I answer to nobody. I um, come back to Ireland when I want. I do a little bit of TV work. I do a few matches. I work for a couple of good companies. I turn up and give my opinion at the matches, mm. and I go home. No real stresses in my life. <laughs> no, it's all good. What do you find so attractive about the dogs? Um, well, about dogs that were going back to again, growing up back in Cork. What's the best part about having them? Just a walk with them, relaxing. That, that, that's when I'm probably more, I suppose, at ease, really, when I want the dogs and I've got a good bit of music on. That'll do me. I'm pretty, pretty happy when I'm out with the dogs, yeah. Must have. I just like, I like dogs. <laughs> I've always liked dogs. Yeah, I've always liked dogs. Are the questions too hard? <laughs> oh, dogs, you know, they get, they get you get a bit of exercise. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever felt that thing of what we've uh, the big dog, a small dog and a big dog, but I get it more looking at the big dog, a Bernie's mountain dog. And sometimes I get the sense of unconditional love from that and I find it quite inspiring. Do you have a, a Yeah, yeah, of course there's all that part of it, yeah. That bit of loyalty from the dog. Um they obviously sense sometimes, I know they sense what kind of mood you might be in. They feel your energy, what's come, you know, if you're having a good day or a bad day. I know for a fact, when, particularly when I was a manager at Ipswich, and I'd come back from matches, and if we lost the game, which unfortunately we did regularly, I, um, it was just sense, as I was getting out of the car, they just look at me and they go, he's lost today. <laughs> so whatever energy I was giving out, they'd pick up and that, and then they just might go hiding for an hour or two, and, uh, yeah, but the dogs give you you know, that unconditional love, and they're loyal, and they don't ask any questions. I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to take a quick break, and Roy is going to stay with us. So we'll see you in a few minutes.